morning, brother and sister. Good day to you. Welcome to join our Grace Unlimited online. I am happy and delighted you are with us. God is all about having a relationship with you today. It is His work that brings transformation into our life through this relationship. No matter where you are watching this video, I'd like to encourage you to share this video to your friend, especially to those who bring into your remembrance. This is not a coincidence that you remember them. This message might what they needed right now. So share this video by clicking the share button, copy the URL, pass it and send it to them. Let the word of peace plant it into their heart. As a church family, we will be partaking of the Holy Communion together shortly. So remember to prepare your elements for the Holy Communion, the bread and the juice. We also be worshipping the Lord with our giving. We can receive both digitally or via check. For more detail, check the description box down below. Only if you made Grace Unlimited as your home church. We love to connect with you and we have prepared our Grace Unlimited social media platform as shown here. You may follow us according to your convenience so we can stay connected and be encouraged by our latest update. I trust that today's service will bless you. And now, let's move on to the next! Good morning, church. Tiba saatnya segala bangsa, suku, kaum dan bahasa datang untuk menyembah Yesus. Mari bersama dengan saya pada pagi ini kita datang dan kita meninggikan tangan kita untuk menyembah Dia. Amen. Haleluya. Semua katakan tiba saatnya kami berkumpul bersatu. Dari senar suku dan bangsa Yeay! Berdiri di hadapan Tata anak domba Satu suara Menyatakan Menyatakan Semua Keselamatan bagi Allah Yang duduk dan bertata Kami naikkan pada anak domba Kekuasaan, kemuliaan bagi dia selamanya Suku dan bangsa Berdiri di hadapan Tata anak domba Satu suara Yeay, Menyatakan Semua keselamatan Bagi Allah Yang duduk bertata Kami naikkan pada Anak domba Kekuasaan, kemuliaan bagi dia selamanya Semua katakan Selamat bagi Allah yang duduk dan bertakta Kami naikkan pada anak domba Pujian, pujian dan kekuatan Hormatan, kekuasaan, kemuliaan bagi dia selamanya Keselamatan bagi Allah yang duduk dan bertakta Kami naikkan pada Allah domba Semua pujian dan kekuatan Hormatan, kekuasaan Yeah! Jeez. 
and sisters it is time for partaking the communion if you have your elements with you right now let's remind ourselves of what the bread and blood represent if you have been in grace and limited for a while now you will know that the bread represents jesus body that was punished for your wholeness and healing for if we need protection and healing today jesus body has been punished so that our body does not need to suffer again any lying symptoms that is on our body, we can bind in Jesus' name and claim our healing. By all means, continue taking whatever medication you are taking right now. And as you, 
as you partake of the bread, claim your 30%, 60%, and 100% healing as you choose to put your faith in Jesus' faith. Jesus also took the crown of thorns and sweat blood at the garden so that today our minds are made whole and guarded against depression and all mental illness. And today when we work, we work without stress, for he has put all these on his own body. Church, the blood of Christ represents forgiveness of sins, for the wages of sin is death. Jesus had to die for us, to save us. Jesus' blood is so precious that he can die for all the humans put together in times past, present, and in the future, and much more. His work on the cross made God a gainer. The payment Jesus paid was more than 100%. If you can put a number to it, let's say it's about 120%. The life of Jesus is worth much more and today the blood of Christ is so effective that whoever chooses to believe and put his trust in Christ, that person is more than a conqueror. Everything in the new covenant is about much more, not just what you need, for if you need more, Jesus will be more than enough for you. Church, as we partake of the elements, let's take it as if Jesus himself is serving it to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Church, let's partake of the bread together. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Church, let's partake of the juice. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Church, as we come with our tithes and offering, let's remember that all that we have belongs to God. And what little we bring is out of a thankful heart. For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need, I will reveal the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. Church, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the ability to earn. We thank you that all that we have is given by you. And as we lift up our ties to you, we ask that you will bless the work of our hands and add your special blessing to prosper and multiply it for your glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Church. Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining us. 
at the Grace Unlimited online service. I'm delighted that you're with us. We are doing an exciting series every Sunday on the person of Christ. And I think last Sunday we did something really important, which is to show you that, that grace is not just a doctrine or a teaching, but grace is actually Jesus personified. That Jesus is grace personified. And so that's why it's so important when you understand grace, you understand the heart of God. That this time that we are living in, this season that we are living in, in is called a dispensation of grace or the time of grace or season of grace. God's throne is called the throne of grace. God's spirit is called the spirit of grace. And so when you understand grace, you understand the heart of the Father. You know, as I grow as a Christian or a believer in Christ, I realize more and more that how much I need the grace of God for every day of my life. That every day I can do nothing on my own. That when Jesus says in John 15, apart from me, you can do nothing. Actually, it means nothing. My flesh is weak and I really need His grace. And also His grace is not just saving grace. In every area of my life, if I learn to depend on His, on his grace, then my life is easy. Then my life is exciting. Amen. And uh, so let me show you from two verses from Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of His grace. Can you see that? The riches of His grace. And then Paul repeats himself in Ephesians 3 at, I am by far the least important of all God's people, but He gave me the grace to preach the, to the non-Jews about the wonderful riches that Christ gives. So can you see that grace is rich? Amen. And, and so this morning, I want to show you from the Word of God what it means to be rich in the grace of God. Grace, we all know, is the unmerited favour of God, the unearned, unmerited favour of God, which means you have the favour of God in your life, like Abraham, like David, not based on what you do, but based on the work of Jesus Christ. Here's another definition which I like. Grace, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. Right. On you, the riches of God on you at the expense of Jesus, which means somebody paid, right? We are redeemed not with silver or gold, but with the precious blood of the Lamb, right? So Jesus' blood is the most expensive things in the world. It's the most precious thing in the world. Yet God paid for your salvation. God paid for your redemption by the shedding of Jesus' blood. And so that's the grace of God. It doesn't mean uh, it doesn't cost God anything. It costs God dearly, right? But it's free towards us. It's unmerited uh, towards us. It's favor for us because of the payment of Jesus Christ. Grace, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. So here's a revelation on the grace of God by some of our people when I fellowship with them online on Zoom. So here's just a short excerpt, but I think this will bless you. Like for example, like one billion is a small thing. One billion is a small thing. One billion USD is a small thing. Wow, the big revelation. Uh, it's a small thing. Whatever, yeah. that, whatever is created, that like, whatever yeah. is created and whatever is in this world that you need is a small thing. But the big thing. Big thing in God's kingdom, uh, in God's eye, the big thing is you. Because to redeem you, need Jesus, His Son. The other thing, not need Jesus. So you are the biggest thing. And Amen. you are the most Amen. important one. Good revelation. Yeah, so, so whatever that is under Jesus is done. Amen. So it's a small thing. What, whatever, yeah, whatever you need in this world, in this world, that were is a small thing. It's like you know, like how the world always said, there is Jesus. There are other things. It is too extreme. Either you choose Jesus or the other things. But the Bible verses says, like the Lord already loved you so much that He gives you both Jesus and the other things. That's why we are prosper in on this earth. Yeah, yeah, Amen. yeah. Not because of us, because of Jesus. Yeah, and we are continue to prosper and be a blessing everywhere we go. We are already a blessing now. We continue to be a blessing. Okay. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh I, I want, I want to add on. I want to add on. 
You know, you okay, know the okay. Joshua doing that stop the sun, stop the moon. Oh. <laughs> that one is small thing for God. God's eyes. Small thing. Oh, yeah. Stop the sun, stop the moon. Yeah. Uh, uh, that is the small thing. The big thing is your salvation. The Bible makes it very clear that for us to win in life, to reign in life, we are to receive the abundance of grace. Not just a little grace, but a whole bunch of it. Amen. Romans 5, 17 reads, For if by one man's offence, death reign by one. Right? So, the problems that are in the world today, sickness and pain, disease and death, but much more. Can you see the word much more? They who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life, shall win in life by one Jesus Christ. So don't let anyone tell you that you have too much grace. We need more grace in our life. Amen. Hallelujah. And but let me do something here. But uh, since we are here, right? Let me show you the gift of righteousness. So the Bible says New Covenant, New Testament, righteousness is not works righteousness, it's a gift of righteousness. Righteousness is imputed to you. Amen. Put on you, right? Even though you didn't do any righteous deed, but God still see you righteous because on the, on the cross, the divine exchange took place. Jesus took your sin and in return gives you His righteousness. So it's a gift of righteousness that is in you. The righteousness of God in you. I was just meditating on this even last night. And uh, I had this revelation which I want to share with you. Amen. You know the woman with the issue of blood, right? She said, if I can touch the hem of His garment, I will be healed, right? So it's Jesus you can say it's Jesus' garment of righteousness. Amen. Can you imagine, can you see you, uh, that God has put the robe of righteousness, Jesus' robe of righteousness on you. Amen. So healing is yours uh, to receive. Uh, you can touch Jesus uh, by putting on His righteousness. Amen. If you can only touch the hem of His garment, you don't only have the hem of His garment, you have the righteousness, the garment of righteousness on you. In uh, Romans 5.17, the word receive, right, is the Greek word lambano. And very interesting, the word lambano is in the active tense, tense all right, which means to continue to receive, right? So it's not just um, receive God's grace for your salvation, but for every day of your life, right, have received His grace for your health, receive His grace for your relationship, receive His grace for wisdom, for your business, whatever it is, right? We need the grace of God. So keep on receiving, not just a little of this grace, but the abundance of this grace. God's heart is that you receive this grace in an abundant mode. Amen. And uh, so let's look at what it means to have abundance of grace. The word uh, abundance is from the Greek word parisio, right? Parisio uh, is used for in a familiar verse that is in John chapter 10 verse 10, right? Jesus said, I come that you may have life and life more abundantly. That's the word parisio, right? But let me show you God's heart for you, right? Ephesians 3 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works uh, in earth, that word uh, abundantly is parisio. But can you see God put uh, exceedingly, the word there, exceedingly is the Greek word Hooper, right? Super abundant, all right? Super, hooper, hooper perisio, super abundant, right? So from abundant to super abundant. Then in Hebrews, um, Hebrews 6, right? When God says, surely I'll bless you, multiply, I will multiply you. Um, in verse 17, God says, God, does God determine to show more abundantly to the age of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirm it by an off, all right? And so the word here, more abundantly, is more super abundant, hallelujah. So from abundant to super abundant to more super abundant, right? And so this is really mind blowing. God's heart for you, right, is to uh, receive a abundance of his grace, abundance of his blessing, hallelujah. That's the heart of a father. That's the lavishness of God in your life. To make things clearer, we cross-reference Romans 5.20, alright, we read, But the law entered so that the offence 
might abound. But when the when, but when sin abounded, grace did much more, much more abounded. Hallelujah. That's why we focus on what God's major in, right? For a long time, the body of Christ major on sin, 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 right? But we want to major in what God's major, right? When God, the word of God says, when sin abound, when there's enough of sin, the word there for uh, when sin abound is the word pleonasm, which means there is more than enough sin, all right? But can you see that when grace much more abounded, that's hooper perisio, all right? Super abounding grace. Hallelujah. All right. And that's why we, we want to focus on what God focus on, what God measures on. Let's focus on the hooper perisio. Uh, grace of God, the super abounding grace of God. I'm excited about that. I know you are excited about this too, amen. So when sin abound, God's grace is greater than sin. Bunhouse uh, commentary has a interesting definition, interesting commentary on this verse, all right? And uh, it says here when sin abound, it's like a cup overflow, right? Or your glass overflow. Um, but then grace super abound is like the room being flooded in by the grace of God, right? So imagine that, right? Your cup overflows versus an overflow of water in the room, right? Which is greater? Definitely grace, right? You can always say, um, it, you can also define it like this, right? When sin was finite, grace was infinite or grace was unlimited, right? That's where we get the name of our church, Grace Unlimited. So you might think, oh, your sin is so big or your bad habit, you are so disgusted with it. But let me tell you, God's grace is much bigger than your sin. God's grace and forgiveness is bigger than your bad habits. You might think, oh, my debt is this big, I can't, there's no way out of it. But let me tell you, and uh, from the various testimonies, from all the, the testimonies I hear from uh, within our church and the people that I know who receive the abundance of grace, God's grace and solution is much bigger than your situation. Even if you're suffering in your body, God's grace is bigger than that, right? God's grace, even though the, the medical people say there's no answer, no solution to your medical situation, God's grace is bigger than that. There's so much more healing than sickness as in your body, right? So receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. You know that there are five much more being mentioned in Romans, uh, chapter 5. Let me, let me give to you quickly, all right? It, um, there is much more peace, much more life, much more grace, much more reigning, much more super abounding grace. Hallelujah. And I like that, right? So God wants to give you the much more. He's the God of the much more. You know the name El Shaddai, right? The word El Shaddai is the God of the more than enough. Hallelujah. So He's the God of the much more, right? So see the super abounding grace of God in your life. Receive it, receive it, receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. God wants you to reign in life. Here's another powerful verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. It reads, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Good work. I realized that once you have a revelation of grace, you cannot help but being generous. The people who have a revelation of grace are the most generous, most helpful, most kind. I was sharing with some of our members on Zoom on Wednesday night that you know God has prepared good, good works for us to do. Amen. And these works are not uh, religious works or works to please God, but out of the overflow of our hearts, out of the overflow of His blessings in our life, knowing that all your sins have been forgiven, that you are blessed with every spiritual blessing, that you want to bless others. And God in His grace gives us good works, prepare good works ahead for us to do. Maybe just to uh, text somebody an uh, encouraging message or text somebody out for lunch. Little things like that God has prepared for us to do, but it will be a blessing to others. Amen. And the word here, uh, forever, is from the Greek word um, dynatos, translated into dunamis, right, uh, or dynamite, and uh, it means God wants to dynamite His grace in your life, right, so give you such abundance of His grace that you cannot contain it, that you want to be a carrier of His grace to wherever God calls you to be. Do you know that uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 
in the context of the previous verse and the verses after that is about giving, it's about money. All right, look at, let's look at the, the verses, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. So let us each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And then verse 10, verse 11. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. But while you are enriched in everything, for all liberty, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. So, grace, giving is a grace. Hallelujah. That's why we teach tithing and giving. Not to, not because the church need to need money, but because we know that giving and tithing, it will bless our church members. Hallelujah. And it's God's principle, right? Can you see from, from these verses, do you know that it's the principle of the kingdom? Sowing and reaping is the principle of the kingdom. Seed time and harvest is the principle of the kingdom, right? That God knows that when we sow, uh, we will reap a harvest. And God's way is always better, right? When you sow an apple seed, you get an apple tree. When you sow many apple seeds, you get an orchard, all right? So when we what we sow, we will reap, right? So don't eat all your seed. Sow it, right? And God say here, He supplies seed for the sower and bread for the food. Hallelujah. So a lot of things God has blessed us, we can eat, but keep some to sow. Hallelujah. And God give us the grace to give. And uh, I'm excited about that, right? So um, I don't have to elaborate more because I know you have, you know this truth, right? Because I've seen so many of you blessed uh, in the area of your finances because you know, uh, I understand this truth. You have a revelation on tithing. The old covenant is a covenant of demand. That's why God demanded holiness, God demanded obedience. That's why God says, if you will do this, thou shalt not do this. It's based on your works. But under the new covenant is a covenant of supply. And God says, I will supply your holiness. I will give you righteousness. I will impute righteousness to you. That's why we are so blessed to be living under new covenant, not under old covenant, right? So the need, a grace supply, the law demands. Uh, can you see if Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And then Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7 says, So that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I already believe right, that uh, in the ages to come, even in eternity, we will still be discovering the lavishness, the riches of the grace of God because our finite mind, our human mind can only comprehend this much about the grace of God. But God's grace is so much bigger, so much larger, larger that it will take us the whole of eternity. Wow, right? When we get to heaven, we will still be discovering truths uh, having revelation about His grace because God's grace is in super abounding mode. So how can we be confident of uh, all the things that I shared today, I preach today, uh, is true? It's because, according to the Word of God, it's because God has given us everything through Jesus Christ and with Jesus Christ. Romans 8 verse 32 says, Truly, He did not, did not spare His own Son, but deliver Him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely gives us all things? He says here, God sacrificed his own son. God freely gave us his own son. And because of that, the other blessings comes via Jesus Christ, came through Jesus Christ, came with Jesus Christ. It is because of the payment of his blood. It is because of the crown of thorns that he wore. It is because of his, the nails that, that he took for us that was on his hand and on his feet. It was the beating that he, he took for us. All his sacrifices, all his work on the cross, because of that, everything comes via him and through him. It's because of Jesus. We owe a debt we could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. It's all because of what Jesus 
has done for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 says, But we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit from God, so that we might know the things that are freely given to us by grace. So all the blessings of God are free for us, even though it costs God everything, even though it costs God a heavy price, that His Son has to die on the cross. His Son has uh, to be sacrificed for you and I. But today we are forever grateful right, to receive the grace of God. Today we glorify God, we acknowledge God, we give Him the praise by receiving His grace. Hallelujah. And God wants us to be a receiver. Right? They that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, can you see the word receive? Right? We will reign in life. God wants us to be reigning in life by receiving from Him. In closing, here's another excerpt from our Zoom session, a durian job at the expense of their pastor. Yeah, of course, Mimir, uh, I want to bring pastor eat durian alone. <laughs> you are ready, pastor? Yeah, man. The oh, yeah. durian in heaven, I will eat. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Uh, yeah, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> that time durian no tons on. That time durian taste also different I think. That time the durian Glorious smell, taste smell like, like Ross. <laughs> Glorious the durian in heaven <laughs> smell like Ross. I don't believe pasta, I don't believe it's a it's a Ross test. Yeah, it's uh, still uh, durian, right? I, 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 I ask you I ask you uh, in heaven can I have smelly smell man? Glorious <laughs> Durian. <laughs> no, no. Durian is called good yeah. smell and glorious ma. How yeah, can glorious you know ma. King of fruit, my man. Yeah, it's not king of fruits. It's not our fruit. king of fruits. I think Jesus passed to you, Pastor. Pastor, wake up. <laughs> and then we over there, we we look at Pastor being Gigi. <laughs> no, his face won't be Gigi already because not. <laughs> Yeah, glorious body, glorious durian. Okay, okay, okay. Glorious, <laughs> immune, so immune, so glorious and beautiful. Oh yeah. But then it's Jesus lah, glorious and yeah, beautiful. yeah. Glorious and beautiful. Don't worry, pastor. Don't worry. You can take it. You can take it bodily. You can take it. King of king will serve you. King of fruit. Yeah. <laughs> king of king will serve you. The king of fruit. Correct. Yes. He cannot serve you the the lousy yeah. fruit. He has to serve you. King <laughs> of rambutan. Wait lah, rambutan cannot pass lah. As we close this service, let me give you the blessing. Hallelujah. Beloved, stay safe with Jesus' salvation. Be strong in the power of His might. Reign in Jesus' righteousness and grace. Prosper with Jesus' wealth. Live a healthy life with Jesus' health. Renew your youth with Jesus' youth. And shine with Jesus' light. Wherever you go, He is with you. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I declare to you a blessed week, a good week, an awesome week ahead of you. You are protected in Christ. You are living under the shadows of His wings. Hallelujah. Be blessed, Grace Unlimited. Amen. Dear brother and sister, thank you for staying with us. I pray that you are blessed through the messages. Grace, come as a person who is Jesus Christ. He is gentle and warm. Jesus is a God of love and He longs to have an intimate relationship with you. Friend, if you want to receive this gentle and warm Father God, allow Him to love you, hug you closely and tightly unto Himself if you allow Him. I'd like to invite you to make this prayer together with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me and dying for me at the cross. You cleanse me and pronounce me completely clean through the shedding of your precious blood through the cross. I now receive you as my Saviour and Lord. All things have passed away and all things in me have become new. Thank you, Father, that you see me righteous in Christ and you are my holiness. You engrave my name in your palm and in your heart for you love me. Now, teach me to see myself through the lens of Christ. Father, I give thanks to you. Amen. Brother and sister, 
Congratulations and welcome to join in our big family. If you are a new believer who prayed together with me and who stayed in coaching, do write in to us through our WhatsApp contact and type new friend and our team will connect with you and we have a welcoming gift for you. I know you have some exciting testimony to share with us. So write in to our WhatsApp contact number and we'll be encouraged together. Lastly, if you need a prayer, let us know by WhatsApp us and we will pray together with you. Thank you once again for joining us. I see you again next week, this time. Have a blessed week ahead. Bye.